Wonderful. So my name is Carmen Gaines and I am a arts advocate uh, born and raised here in San Jose and my family home is still in District 10. Uh, my parents still live there very close to Almondon Lake. And uh, to go over some ground rules, uh, we would like to maintain decorum and create an immersive and informative experience for all. Um, so that's why we're hosting it on this Zoom webinar for format. Um, and the uh, moderate, uh, moderators and candidates will be the only ones speaking. If you do have questions, feel free to send them in and we will do our best to try to address those. Um, there will be no candidate intros. We'll go right to the questions. Um, the candidate questionnaire responses were distributed openly before the forum. If you go to sjartsadvocates.org, um, right. you can um, scroll just to the bottom and you'll see the candidate questionnaires. Thank you both um, for participating in that questionnaire in advance. Um, we, uh, part of the core team of SJAA, develop these questions. Um, we ask that you both take about two minutes um, to respond to each question. We'll do our best to allow for um, the right amount of time. And if a Zoom participant would like to submit a question for the candidates, um, you can use the Q&A feature. And if there is adequate time, we will get to participant questions. Um, the candidates are encouraged to refrain from direct attacks or and instead focus on their own ideas and policy positions. And candidates will be allowed up to one additional minute to respond to any invocation by their opponents outside of uh, general camaraderie. Um, foul, false, uh, false self-serving, belligerent, derogatory, sexist, racist, fascist, or otherwise hateful or hurtful commentary of any kind will not be tolerated, um, and you will be immediately removed from the forum or banned um, from all SJA events, so please be mindful with your questions as well. And as always, we encourage you to visit SJ artsadvocates.org to sign up for our mailing list and get important advocacy alerts and learn how you can support our efforts. Um, I would like to ask um, how um, each of our panelists would like to be addressed by their by uh, first name, um, incumbent council member. So if you'd like to um, let me know how I can call upon each of you, that would be appreciated. You just call me George. Council, council member Batra would be good. Okay, will do. Okay, well, starting with you, um, council member Batra, if you would like to describe your personal or professional experiences with arts and culture, um, feel free to highlight any specific memories that you'd like to share. Well, I want to share my personal experiences right now. The last two years, what I've been doing in terms of making the arts and culture to be promoted in the city of San Jose, uh, you know that uh, I have had frequent meetings with Peter on this matter. Now, I have personally gone and sought the budget for getting murals painted in the Blossom Valley, where they have been looking for it for a long time, for I think more than 10 years. So I finally got them a budget this year of $20,000 so that a local artist can actually paint that. We already got three murals painted in our uh, district. Uh, one in Almaden Community Center, another one in Wineland, another one in um, a Santa Teresa Library. Two are inside, one is outside. Also, I support the concerts in the park. And this year, with my heavy promotion of it, we had in the last concert 1,100 people attending the session versus typical maybe around two to 300 people. So we are giving a good exposure to those people. Also, I have taken additional budget. We have four concerts in Albadan, but we had no concerts in anywhere else in our district. I got on the budget for getting two more concerts in La Colina Park so that the attendees over there can easily join that. Plus, it gives opportunity to local artists to present to the other people here. So I've been actively promoting these things because I believe that the art and culture in a city is an economic driver. 
it supports the local people, local artistry. And you know that I'm working on trying to make San Jose City as a destination city. In order to make it a destination city, we have to have things which are happening, which people want to come and enjoy. And as a result, that's what I've been trying to do. Thank you. I forgot to mention, uh, uh, Council Member and George, uh, uh, we, won't, we aren't going to be having a visible timer, um, but I will politely around two minutes ask you to wrap up uh, your thoughts, but doing so, sure. doing so far, so thank you. <laughs> Um, Carmen, I understood the question to me, what in our personal lives art has meant to us. Is that the correct response you're looking for? Yes. Describe in your uh, personal or professional experiences with arts and culture. And if you can highlight any specific memories that you have. Yeah, absolutely. So art has been ever present in my life, particularly with my dad. My dad loved music. And I can't tell you how many times I fell asleep Friday, Saturday nights with my dad just blasting you know, old soul tunes, James Brown or whomever. So music has been a very influential part of my life. Um, I grew up as an athlete and never actually considered myself a musician or someone that would follow that path. Um, but around 30 years old, I started playing the guitar and the piano and found it to be just a wonderful outlet. Um, it's an opportunity to, in many ways, express emotion in ways that you ordinarily can't, especially growing up as a guy and being an athlete and taught to be tough and rough. It just, it gave me an outlet that was emotionally cleansing for me. And I see art in two ways. I see art as something that you can strive to produce. And art is also something that you can experience and consume. And I also have found myself, especially here in my older age, you know, having an emotional attachment to pieces of art, you know, even abstract art, for some reason, it'll just hit me in a certain way. So I see art as an opportunity to express yourself emotionally, to experience the world emotionally. And it's an opportunity to really improve a quality of our lives. So that's my personal experience. And just a footnote, my nephew, who I'm really close with, who also went to the same high school I did, is on my path as an athlete, broke his foot here and is having surgery and is going to be out for a while. And my goal is to buy him a guitar and a keyboard. And so while he's laid up, hopefully inspire him to get involved in the arts as well. Thank you both. And uh, for our next question in our candidate questionnaire, um, you both express some degree of support for SJAA's policies priority um, that the city of San Jose reallocate the current 40% general fund set aside from the transit occupancy tax, aka the TOT, to support arts, culture, and tourism programs, given, of course, that there are the recognition of the um, budget deficits and uh, more need for exploration. Um, given the right conditions, how specifically would you lead in getting this policy change accomplished? And um, is that something that you would do um, in your terms? And Council Member Basra, if you would like to start. So I, I think I have indicated this in the private conversations that the TOT money, 40%, which goes to the general fund, I was shown a math that if we use that 40% for other purposes, like for art and culture, and there were three categories, we could generate another $17 million of budget uh, uh, money for the general fund. I tried to discuss that with our budget director and he said that he did not buy into it. As a result, I did not push it too hard this year. I would certainly be looking into that one more to see why he does not believe that that math which has been presented to us by your teams, that it doesn't work. If that math is correct, I would like to make sure that that money from the TOT, the 40%, goes towards the other areas to help us support the arts and also be able to get more money back into the general fund according to uh, the calculations which are shown to me. Thank you. George, do you need me to restate the question? No, thank you though. Um, yeah, I would like to see the allocation increase, um, but I'd also like to see us explore other avenues. And I think um, Peter was mentioning you were looking at philanthropic opportunities to raise funds. You know, in local government, there's always public-private partnerships for development and what I think the city can play a role in bringing the actors and the community together and develop an opportunity where we can get a lot of private funding for the arts. I mean, that's the way it's been, right, historically, especially like through the Renaissance and whatnot. You always had a benefactor. 
these folks that had a tremendous amount of money and an appreciation for the arts. So I think San Jose as a city can play a role, whether it's providing venues, providing spaces and opportunities for the expression of art. But I do think there's a ton of money out there that with the city's help, we could get and allocate towards the arts. So it'd be my passion. And I understand and respect to the the way art can actually improve the quality of our lives. And if we have an arts district, for example, in our downtown area where you can go see a vibrant either shows or see art, that actually does impact the quality of our life and it makes it a, a tourist destination. So I think there's wonderful sources of revenue for the arts that we could pursue as a city together with the, the arts community. So my goal would be to raise as much money as we can from as many sources and not limited just to TOT funds. Thank you. That's a perfect segue um, into this next question. So beyond the TOT reapportionment, what other financial strategies do you support to secure more resources to invest in arts, culture and tourism programs? And George, if we can start with you. So I've often thought that it would be wonderful to have housing for artists, even traveling artists and visiting artists. I know housing costs are probably the most difficult expense for anyone that's considering being an artist in the Bay Area, and particularly in San Jose. So I think we could partner with the development community and find spaces that we can attribute to the arts. And again, it's going to feed back into our city and our culture and our quality of life and our bottom line. So for me, the development community, I think, would be one source. The philanthropic community would be another source. And we also have a tremendous amount of ground floor, or vacant ground floor spaces that we potentially could rezone and convert into homes for artists and also uh, storefronts for artists, whether they are, want to show their paintings or have, you know, shows or whatnot. So there's a lot of real estate space that I'd like to explore as as and figure out ways to subsidize it for housing for artists. That way to eliminate one of the biggest hurdles to having artists locate here and live here. Thank you. Councilmember Bacha, would you like me to restate the question? Hi, uh, yes, please. Uh, beyond the TOT reapportionment, what other financial strategies do you support to secure more resources to invest in arts, culture, and tourism programs? I'd like to have the programs be self-sustaining. Self-sustaining is when you present attractive programs, you will be able to get more revenues by more attendees. We have already talked about it that I want to have San Jose become a destination city. If it is a destination city, it means something has to be happening there. And with the happenings, you will be able to get the revenue from those attendees. Uh, somebody expressed it that we are going to be working with the airport to get more traffic in. The traffic in, they said butts in the seats in the plane are heads in the hotels. Okay, so we want to be able to capitalize on that activity which the airport is going to be doing, trying to bring in more passengers over here. Also, I think our focus is strictly on downtown right now. The arts and culture is enjoyed by everybody everywhere. I would like to see change some of our focus to be also into the district. District 10 is a pretty good district. I don't know how many of people come from District 10 to the downtown to enjoy any of these things. We need to be heavily promoting those things. Also, we need to be bringing these things into the districts. And a district like District 10 would be a perfect opportunity to have that. District 4 would be a perfect opportunity to have. So I like to expand where these performances take place. And as a result, we can have more attractive plays and make more revenue from those performances. Thank you. And George, again, we'll start with you for this next question. How would you ensure that creative industries are a part of the city's economic development strategies? How would I ensure the creative industries? That's a broad topic, right? Because you could have gamers that are making video games, right? That would fall under that umbrella as well. And so in that regard, I would look at, you know, there's an economic component to this, whether you're an artist or not, you're still a small business person. So it's difficult for even small business people that aren't artists to do business currently with San Jose. So in addition to streamlining some of our permitting processes, we have the most onerous regulatory environment out I think it'd be nice to have an entertainment and arts section of our economic development department. I don't know that we cater to that sector much. Um, and I know I'd like to connect with some of the other artist hubs. I know Los Angeles, Nashville, some of these other places. So 
for me, approaching this as a business and providing the tools for artists to be self-sustaining private business owners and whatever tools, economic tools, whether they're grants or spaces that, are, that we can provide for them, but allowing them to approach this as a small business and thrive and be successful as a small business. Thank you. And Council Member Batra, um, how would you ensure that creative industries are part of the city's economic development strategies? So you heard from my previous comments that I think the grants, philanthropic activities, those are great. I consider those as incubators to start things around. But eventually a thing can only survive if it is self-sustaining. And as a result, I already stated that there are many ways to make this as an economic engine. We need to give some attention. We would like to have in the Office of Economic Development or in somewhere in the city staff to be focused on these things. We got our concert hall, we got the convention center, we got all this, we got Team USA, but we are not really focused on making these things thrive and become self-sustaining. If they're self-sustaining, they're actually generating revenue. You, you'll be looked upon in a different way than right now, a consumer of money from the general fund. I think you could actually be thriving to a point where you're actually contributors to that. And that needs to be a given focus. And that's what I would like to do. Thank you. And for this next question, uh, the city's cultural connection arts master plan and the public art master plan are both out of date. The cultural plan expired in 2020 and the public art master plan reached its sunset in 2012. Uh, will you work to secure funding to complete an update of these plans? And what do you think are the most important issues that should inform the new plans? And council member Basra, if we could start with you. I, I think it will be a perfect time to start that because we have in the council discussed uh, at least three times making this city as a destination city. We have talked about our airport to be able to generate more revenue coming in. We do have a couple of activities happening in 2026, which are going to bring San Jose into some of the limelight. I think we need to capture that opportunity. And I was talking to the uh, our city manager. She is about to hire a person to be focused on the 2026 activities, I think we should take that opportunity to actually expand that that person to be expanding into developing these master plans so that we not only get the short-term benefit of what is about to happen anyway, is but we fully leverage that. We also develop the plan which will sustain us for years to come. Thank you. And I know this was a two-part question. Do you need me to restate, George? No, no. I'm actually going to just hit the public art part of it. Um, you know, San Jose doesn't have any focal points, right? How would you show someone a picture of something in San Jose and have them immediately say it's San Jose? You know, Chicago has the bean and St. Louis has the arches. We need something like that to express ourselves. You know, I tell people that we have Sharks fans that have never seen the snow because we're just dying for some sort of identity. And so they go to Sharks games and they see the San Jose Sharks. And now the shark and the, the teal and the, the colors themselves, they're, they're so proud of it. We need something like that, a public art installation that, that San Joseans can feel proud of and that we can express to the rest of the world that that's, that's us. It's emblematic of who we are. So it'd be interesting to have each of the districts put together some sort of competition with artists within each district to try to figure out what would be that focal point. What would be the Chicago Bean type of thing? So for me, Public art is very important. And I like to see each district, each distinct neighborhood have some sort of physical representation that's emblematic of that little district and inspire local residents to develop those projects. For me, public art is awesome. It's part of the quality of life. I went and got my master's in urban planning because I understand how the built environment can really impact the quality of our lives. And I think public art can really feed into our personal identities and our identity as a city as well. Thank you. San Jose is home to a number of creative businesses and nonprofits, arts and cultural spaces um, that could be displaced as the city's urban village plans are built out. As a council member, how would you support the retention of these vital assets for the quality of life for those who live and visit in San Jose? And Councilmember Batra, if we could start with you. 
Yeah, so I think in terms of these, uh, we have already gotten historic, uh, historic parts of our town, and we recently named one of those. And any of these previously historic places, we are trying to preserve those in the uh, history uh, San Jose History Museum. So those will be the things we need to make sure that we have uh, taken advantage of that we got a, such a good leverage in our uh, San Jose Historic Museum that we continue to preserve these things and not let them, because of our developments, uh, be removed from there. We recently named one of those historic uh, uh, part of the city and uh, preserved many of the things there. We had some people objecting to it because uh, they said this creates some restriction on their properties and all that. But I think we need to be able to present San Jose as a rich culture. We need to be able to preserve that and we will continue to do it through the mechanism we got in place. Thank you. And George? So again, I'm going to harken back to my previous comment. We have ground floor retail throughout the city that's vacant and sitting wide open. And whether these urban villages end up consuming some of the previous art spaces, there's no limit right now in terms of spaces that are available. And I'm a real estate uh, attorney and I've worked with a lot of developers and the way they actually do their pro formas, they accept that the ground floor is going to be a loss. So they're not actually anticipating much return on the ground floors. The city mandates that multi-use developments need to have a ground floor, ground floor retail, so they do it just to conform with the zoning, but they don't have any economic uh, desire or interest, or they appreciate they're, they're going to take a loss. So we can find a lot of low cost, potentially even subsidized space for the arts throughout the city where ground floor retail is sitting wide open. Amazon pretty much killed a lot of retail spaces. And there's not going to be a lot of competition at the moment for those spaces. So I would love to see us rezone those areas and repurpose those areas for the arts. Thank you. And the arts have the power to convene, build connections, and heal communities. Um, what is one idea that you have to improve, enhance, and support the arts in District 10? Um, who are the key partners and stakeholders you would need to engage to make this idea a reality? And George, if we can start with you. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I'm sure we've got a lot of older people that are involved in the arts. I think it's awesome and, and a wonderful opportunity to engage young folks before they get disillusioned and introduce them to the arts. So I think the schools have a really large role to play and the community centers have a large role to play. If we can introduce arts as a natural thing for folks and something that everyone does with their spare time, that'd be something I'd be very interested in doing, whether it's elementary school, high schools and junior highs, whether it's the bands, uh, the junior high I went to Burnell, we had a jazz band that was amazing. And even to this day on Facebook, these guys get together and play old clips from their seventh and eighth grade when they were playing music together. And it's, it was memorable and it stayed with them. And a lot of them are continuing to be musicians. So for me, focusing on the kids, and making art an exciting option for them and enough outlets immediately close to them where they can experience the arts would be a primary goal of mine. Thank you. And Councilmember Bacho? In the last year, we have been doing in District 10, using the students from Leland High School, Santa Teresa High School, Pioneer High School, who are art students, working with Beauty, Beautiful Day, I have given grants from my office for the paint and others, all the utility boxes on Almaden Expressway and the off streets, which are from there, have been painted under the guidance of one of the adults, uh, Glenn Bur Burkhart, but it's painted by all the students, okay? So all of our utility boxes have their art expression. They have their names on it. When they're going to go to college and they're going to come back, they're going to be able to point, I painted this thing. Okay, So that is a start of that area. And, and I'm expanding that program. I want to take it. It started out on Almond and Expressway. I'm taking it whole district wide. In terms of encouraging music, for my invocation as a council member, I invited the band from... Leland High School. This year for invocation in November, I have invited the joint band from Pioneer and Santa Teresa. So I'm encouraging the schools 
to be able to promote this. I go to every PTA because the schools don't have the budget for these arts and extracurricular activities. But the PTAs, I give them grants and they in turn funnel the grants to these extracurricular activities. Music is one of the big things. And I've gone to their concerts in support of those and we are encouraging these. These are just some of the examples. Then I told you already about the concerts which we did in uh, Greystone Park. So those are the ways which we give promotion to the people who are getting to enjoy it and the people who are getting to perform it. Um, and for our final, yeah, he answered that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, um, let me address the question to our, uh, co-moderator here. Um, should we go to, um, we have a couple of questions from, um, attendees. Should I go to that first? Yeah, or? I think we have some time. So uh, council member George, if you don't mind, we've got a couple of questions from our attendees. We want to get to, and there's somewhat follow-ups on things you said uh, earlier in the so if you mm -hmm. want to take the first one yes and let folks know who you want to sure uh, since this wasn't submitted anonymously um alexander urbanowski asks um council member batra mentioned and uh, admissions and paid audiences should be the primary revenue stream for arts how do we ensure as a city that all residents have access to the arts even residents who don't have the capacity to pay does government have a role in providing arts experiences to those in our community who can't afford full price, including youth. So Councilman yes. Bachelet, since this is addressed yeah. to you, start with you. So con concerts in the San Jose uh, Greystone Park, the four of them, they're all free. There is no charge to that one. Plus, in the fourth concert, we even had free ice cream for them from our San Jose Police Department because they have a truck which does that. And any of the times we have talked about from the council that if we had end up with certain things, a prices performance in downtown or anything, we will certainly want to give a discount to the people who are not going to be able to afford it or certainly give that value to them. We did that at the time when we were talking about uh, these of our uh, water park. A water park is likely to be given to a private operator. And Peter Ortiz and myself, we demanded that as a condition of that one, when we give that to the uh, private uh, operator, that the lower income people will be able to get the prices which they can afford. And affording that might be is zero to any number. So it's not every performance is going to be charged one, but we should consider where it is appropriate to do it and where the attendees are coming from. You also have Viva Parks, which we do every year to activate our park. We don't charge anything for that one, regardless of where the people are coming. So yes, we want to keep in mind uh, where the sources of revenue are coming from, who the attendees are, and whether they can afford to pay it or not. So it's a combination. It's not today it's everything free, tomorrow everything is charged. It, it would be a hybrid situation. Thank you. And George, would you like to address this? Um, maybe the second part of the question of what is government's role in providing arts experiences to those in their community who can't afford full price, including you? Yeah, I can tell you, uh, so as someone who's the first person in his family to go to college and didn't grow up in around the cultures and arts, um, I had an opportunity through my school back when I was in the second grade. We went and saw a symphony, and it was free for us. So I think the city can, again, partnering with philanthropic means and folks, provide folks, particularly in socioeconomic, on the lower rungs of the socioeconomic ladder throughout the city, an opportunity to experience not just free music in the park that everybody can go to, but I'm talking about the symphony, some of these more expensive opportunities to hear music and, and see the arts, but subsidize it or actually eliminate the fee by raising funds from philanthropic means and exposing some of these young folks who otherwise would never have the opportunity to see an opera or a classical concert. I think we definitely have a role to play and we can partner with the philanthropic community and actually some of these bigger tech companies that, uh, for example, San Jose, most of the folks that live in San Jose work in these tech companies and they take advantage of the fact that, you know, they don't have to do much for where their folks live. So I think Apple and a lot of these companies where their employees live here in San Jose have a duty to pay back to San Jose. So I'd love to raise some money from these big tech companies for these types of programs. 
Thank you. And the question um, submitter thanks, uh, thanks you both as well. Um, the second question that we received was from Jonathan Francisco Borca, an East Side San Jose resident, live music slash art advocate. Um, they have sat in one, um, sat in several candidate forums in which arts funding and support were promised, but ultimately under delivered. How might both of you leverage your influence with your fellow council members to ensure that what's named here is follow through um, is is follow through with, um, with at minimal and honest and transparent effort? And George, if we'd like to start with. So as I mentioned earlier, music is big for me, especially live music. I mean, there's certain cities around the country that have a reputation for putting on good live music. You got Sixth Street down in Austin. You got Nashville. You got New Orleans. There's absolutely no reason why San Jose can't be that type of place. And again, I keep harping on it because I think it's so underutilized. We have vacant retail spaces all around our downtown that can be opened up as little concert venues. For me, I don't think the cost is the barrier right now to put on live shows and to really get music going. I think it's venues. And I would love to open up as many venues as possible for live music. And the opportunity to San Jose could be a live music capital on par with some of these other places like Austin and Nashville. I think it's sitting right there, ripe and ready for us. Throughout the Bay Area, we've got some very talented musicians. They just don't have any outlets for their live music. So I would be a great proponent of it. And I really don't think it'd be that costly. But my goal would be to, particularly in a segment of downtown, we can identify an arts district of downtown where you can go and Every night here, live music, I would be a big proponent of that. And I don't think it'd be that expensive. It's just marshalling the resources together to make that happen. But that would be a focus. Personally, even if I wasn't a council member, that's something I would strive to do as a person that grew up in San Jose. I would love to see that type of scene here. Yeah. And um, and a, to follow up on that, um, how would you rally support from fellow council members in that effort? I don't think it's a hard sell, right? What are they going to say? No, we don't like music. No, we don't want a live venue, right? If we provide for them the blueprint and why it's an easy thing to do and identify the steps, you know, reverse engineer it. But what would we like to see? We'd like to see a thriving music scene in downtown San Jose or the whatever venues are available. Now let's work our way back from it, reverse engineering it. It's not that difficult to do. And so I can't imagine somebody being on the council day saying, buy a humbug, I don't want music, you know? So I think presenting the opportunity for folks to buy in on it and making it part of the conversation, I think you'd be surprised the momentum it could build and the opportunity for it to come to fruition. Thank you. And Council Member Basra. I think it's a lot easier. Talk is cheap. You know, you can talk about concerts every night in 50 places in downtown. Issue is not the places. It is getting the audience to come there. We have difficulty in getting a lot of people to downtown. And we have to make that safe, attractive, that the people have a reason to come there. Plus, I don't see that downtown has to be the end all of everything. We can have in our District 10, we have a very vibrant uh, Macy's Mall. We could have things there. So art doesn't have to only exist in downtown. So we need to be able to spread this thing around. We need to be able to bring attractive things where people are rushing to it and working with the council members. You know, it, you have to be able to work as a team. And, and my opponent is a person who is going to be a yes man to one person only. Nobody will talk to him. Nobody will actually support him. So if you're going to get how things get done, I'm the one who has worked with the council members to get things done because of the rationale. You have to have a teamwork attitude towards it. And you will be able to get those with the rationale, with the data. Some things will get compromised. Some won't get accepted. Not everything does. The uh, example I just gave you about the water park. We made compromises on that day and... Peter Ortiz and I were on the same side of the issue. So that's how you get the job done, not by being a yes man to one person and alienating everybody else. And George, we'll give you the opportunity to respond to that um, yeah. direct comment. So, so council member, you've been on the council now for two years. What have you done to contribute to the art scene and live music scene anywhere? 
And in addition to that, it's common knowledge that the folks on the council have a very difficult time working with you. It's, I don't want to throw ad hominem attacks to anybody. It's just, it's on the web. This is not helpful. But I, like I mentioned, I studied uh, urban planning for two years. I understand economic development. I understand we don't have to reinvent the wheel. And the notion that not ha having live music downtown, that no one's going to come to it. I mean, it's just an odd, illogical uh, way of thinking about it. And you demonstrated over the last two years, Councilman Botcher, that you're learning on the job. You've been ineffectual. You're a failed and failing politician. So <laughs> I, I'll, I'll leave it at that. George, yeah. you you haven't learned yet. I learned on the job and I did an effective job. You talk about your urban planning. You have shown time and time again, you really don't even understand what we are talking about, the issues on our hand. And as a council member, even being the first time council member, in, I have made changes to the city ordinances, which even people with several years of experience could not do it. For the police department, what I did it. For the COPA, what I did it. So you don't, you have no idea what a council member job is. You talk about the real estate. Uh, let me finish one thing. I, I'm sorry, Councilman, I really have to stop you there. This is getting a little bit off the rails on both both, both your parts, I will, I will say. We've managed to keep it fairly civil for 45 minutes, and I appreciate that. Um, and I appreciate that it's been a long campaign trail for both of you, and uh, you're probably <laughs> growing a little bit uh, uh, familiar with each other uh, at this point. So if we could just um, try to wrap it up at this point, I really want to respect your time and also respect everyone's uh, participation tonight. I don't want to get this off any more off the rails. I do appreciate that there are very significant uh, differences there in, that, in this space, but um, yeah, if we could bring it back around, we, we do have one final question, but I, I appreciate your, uh, both your passion for for the role. Fair enough. Our, our final question um, is, what is one thing you've heard tonight that you would like to learn more about in, in regards to the questions that we had posed? Um, how can San Jose Arts Advocates um, continue to help you all? And we'll start with uh, Councilmember, with George. Okay, yeah, Councilmember George, that's, <laughs> you're forecasting, thank you. Um, you know, it's actually what probably what, what Peter was talking about that this meeting you guys are going to next in terms of the philanthropic world and what role they can play. You know, unfortunately, there is a role for government to play, and but it's a limited role. And I think creating the ecosystem where folks can come together and solve some of our problems is probably the best path forward, particularly with the arts. So I'd be interested in figuring out a way uh, similar to public private partnerships in the development field and other economic development fields ways for us to get more folks involved in this conversation that have a vested interest in seeing the arts thrive in San Jose and beyond that, seeing San Jose thrive, because I think those two things go hand in hand. So for me, you know, a symbiotic relationship with all the players and getting everyone rowing in the same direction, I think is a golden opportunity. And I'm very excited to hear if I could, what happens in this next meeting you guys go to and how that plays out. So I, and I just want to thank both of you uh, for putting this together and give us an opportunity to respond to your questions. Thank you. And Councilmember Batra, how can San Jose Arts Advocates um, continue to be a partner and help? And is there anything that you've heard tonight that you'd like to learn more about? First of all, thank you very much for putting the forum and asking some very interesting questions. In terms of, I, in the during the two years, I have met Peter and his real advocate, uh, the young daughter <laughs> who he has brought to the office all the time, which I enjoyed. The portion which you brought up earlier, those two plans which we were talking about, which have ended, I think it is time to re-invoke them and also leverage the fact that we are trying to make San Jose a destination city, which needs these kind of activities to be attractive, why anybody would want to come to San Jose. And so we should activate that plan and we should work with you and provide the right resources. And then whatever the plan will actually flush out in terms of whatever organizational structure we need to, whether we need to get money from the philanthropist or whether we get the a ticket money, whether we do the things in downtown or whether we do in district or in combination, I think that would be the fallout from the plan. And a plan is the right thing to go for. And that's what I would like to work on with you and would like to get more information on that. Okay. Thank you. That 
brings us to the end of our questions. Thank you both Councilmember Batra and George for sharing your time um, and participating in, in this forum. Um, we wish you both uh, the best of luck with the rest of your campaigns. Um, everyone who is an attendee tonight, thank you as well for being an engaged citizen here in San Jose. Local politics are very important and affect our day-to-day -day lives. This um, has been recorded and will be shared out. Um, if you're not already, please subscribe to the San Jose Arts Advocates newsletter. Follow us on Instagram at SJ Arts. San, San Jose Arts. San Jose Arts. We got, we got the <laughs> We beat the city today. <laughs> the cornerstone of the arts. Um, yeah, so thank you all again, and we hope you all have a good night. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Carmen. You. Thank you, Peter, for showing that our young artist that's, over there. Yeah, okay. yeah, this is our youngest advocate right here. My daughter, <laughs> yes, Peter, that's so. the one. I, I appreciate the pandering, Council Member, but, uh, but it, won't, it won't win you again. <laughs> uh, I'm not yeah. a different 10 resident, unfortunately, but I also want to make a oh, really quick uh, clear that San Jose Arts Advocates, we are informal collective, we're not a 501c, but we also don't endorse formally, so this is strictly for informational purposes, and we won't be taking an organizational position, even if individuals in our group have. I just wanted to throw that out there and make sure that's, that's fine. Fair enough. Perfect. Thanks. Fine. Thank Thank you. Thanks for spreading the information. Thank you. Have yeah. a great night. Thank you. Bye.